All right, so uh, this video is about the noun clause, and a noun clause is a subordinate clause that is used as a noun. So a subordinate clause is a group of related words that has a subject and a verb, but it can't stand alone as a complete sentence. It either doesn't complete, well, it doesn't complete a main idea, is what it, was it, that's what it doesn't do. Anyway, um, the way to find the noun clause is you have to identify how the uh, clause is used in the sentence. And here are the ways a noun can be used. They can be used as subjects, which will come uh, usually at the beginning of a sentence. They can be predicate nominatives, which will be after a linking verb. They can be direct objects, which shows what receives the action of an action verb. An indirect object, which shows what benefits from an action being done to a direct object. They can be an object of a preposition, um, which is a noun after a preposition or they can be in a positive, which is a noun next to another noun, uh, where the second noun describes or identifies the first. So they give you an example of how, how you might see each uh, type of uh, noun clause, which makes this uh, worksheet pretty valuable uh, for studying, because it gives you a good example of each one. Let's do some of the uh, exercise here. I'll do the first five. Number one, you can discuss your report with whichever teacher is available. Whichever teacher is available. This is our clause. Now I know this is a clause because it has a subject, teacher, and a verb, is. And uh, all of these words follow this preposition, with. So this is an object of a preposition. Number two. A little praise from time to time is what most children need. This has a subject, children, and a verb, need. Uh, it can't stand alone as a sentence. And what most children need um, is the thing that, um, you know, is, is. So uh, a little praise uh, and what most children need are the same thing. Anyway, is is a linking verb, so this must be a predicate nominative, which is what it is, it's a predicate nominative. Number three, the mayor will give whoever, and you've probably noticed that a lot of these begin with WH. That's not a rule, but it is kind of suggestive. WH kind of tells you that um, this might be a clause. But anyway, uh, whoever passes the finish line first. So here we have our subject, whoever, and here's our verb, uh, passes. And this is uh, an indirect object. The thing the mayor will actually give will be our direct object, and that's a key to the city, or a key. And this part in the middle between the verb and the direct object, this is the person who benefits from the verb being done to the direct object, and that's where it would be. It's the indirect object. It's right in between the verb and the direct object. If you see the verb give, um, you should be on the lookout for indirect objects because that verb really likes to take them. Number four. The teacher said uh, that this little chunk of granite is over 4 billion years old. All of this is a clause. That this little chunk of granite is over 4 billion years old. Um, this chunk is, subject verb. This is the thing that the teacher said, so this is our direct object. This is the thing that he said. Receives his saying. All right, last one I'll do with you, number five. Uh, what happened to the fable, fabled city of Atlantis remains a mystery. Here's that WH, which isn't a rule because here we have a TH, but that WH is very suggestive that we have a clause going here. So uh, what happened to the fabled city of Atlantis? Um, this here is the beginning of the sentence. Uh, it has a subject and a verb. Um, what happened? And uh, it it is the thing that remains a mystery, which is the main verb in the sentence. It's right here. So this is the subject of this sentence. All right, go ahead and try uh, 6 through 10 on your own, and uh, I'll read off the answers in a moment. Good luck.